What's going on guys? In this uh, cybersecurity video, we're gonna look at another tool called GoBuster. And uh, this tool is usually used in penetration testing uh, for, brute force, uh, for brute forcing web directories. So if you have a web application or if you're testing a web application, if you're a penetration tester uh, and you're testing a web application, you'd wanna use this to see um, or to determine some uh, some of the uh, directories and files that are in that application. And like uh, I always say, only do these types of uh, scans or assessments on targets that you are given specific permission to test. Don't do this for illegal purposes. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, uh, what I'm actually going to do in this video is I'm going to test against the vulnerable machine that I got from VulnHub. So this is the vulner vulnerable machine that runs uh, on the same network with the Kali Linux and um, the web application runs on port 1898. Okay, so we're going to test against that. Now, what I want to say is that I'm specifically talking about GoBuster here because uh, GoBuster is probably one of the most efficient ones that I'm using. I've also been using Derb and DerbBuster and uh, some others, but I found that GoBuster is the one that provides probably some of the most efficient results in my pen tests uh, for this type of uh, assessment. Okay, so uh, GoBuster is I guess or I believe it is pre-installed in Kali Linux but if it isn't pre-installed you can just look for it and download it I guess it has a github repository and you just simply download it um, and install it in a few simple um, terminal commands okay so you access it using GoBuster uh, okay so let's look at the um, at what it can do. So as you can see, it has a lot of options that you can tweak and toggle and uh, turn on. So the two mandatory options are minus U, so you have to specify the target URL for your target, um, and the minus W, uh, which is uh, the path to the word list. Um, additionally, what I've been doing in some of the pen tests um, was uh, specifying uh, extensions if uh, if I was brute forcing for files. So uh, extensions like txt, php, um, bak for backups and all that stuff. And another thing that I found useful was the minus s for the strings. So um, this actually allows you to specify the H, uh, HTTP status code. Um, like 200 okay or if you want to ignore 301s or 500 or 302 and all that stuff okay um, you can also run this in threaded mode and you can do a lot of stuff with it and i'll let you guys discover it yourself i'm actually only gonna look at the very most basic in this uh, in this quick tutorial so uh, like I said, the web application runs on port 1898 and the URL is 192.168, so this is the IP address 0103. So we'll just gonna go buster minus U, HTTP 192.168.0103, and we're also gonna specify the port 1898. If you don't specify anything, it'll default to 80, which is... Uh, the default uh, web port and we're also going to specify a word list uh, and I'm going to use one of the word lists that's in Kali Linux that's predefined in Kali Linux and it's um, it's a short one so it's the one that Derb uses uh, by default so it's in user share word lists Derb and it's big dot txt i believe it has about 4000 um about 4000 words okay and i'm just gonna hit enter and it actually tells you the number of threads that's using 
done by default and the status codes that it looks for and the word list and URL okay so the mode is there here um, so it only looks for directories okay I'm just gonna leave it running just for a couple of seconds until it finds uh, some results and then I'm just gonna um, turn it off because uh, it's not the purpose of this video so as you can see it starts finding uh, 301s which are redirects if I'm correct it found uh, includes misc modules profiles and it found robots.txt which is an okay one so we might uh, have some insight over there if we just navigate to uh, robots.txt and it actually finished I didn't have to stop it so uh, yeah I guess in a nutshell this is how you are uh, actively brute forcing for directories of web applications and like I said only do this on targets that you have specific permission to do all right guys I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful if you want to see more of these videos coming please hit the like button and subscribe thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one